Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. I want to talk to you in this video about whether you need to put frets or lines or dots or anything like that on your violin. Now, those of you that follow my 1 to 30 violin course, which actually is a course that guarantees, 100% guarantees to take you from a complete beginner, absolutely nothing uh, that you you know nothing in music to a decent accomplished intermediate level i'll put a video coming up at the top of the screen somewhere here and i'll link it underneath this video as well so you can see what my course is all about but it's a very popular course um lots of people have uh, you know lots of people have bought the course it's really really good because it guarantees and there's nothing like it available on the internet so go check that out underneath but in the meantime for those of you that have followed the course and are following the course then you'll obviously know the answer to this but a lot of you that are guitarists notice that there are no frets on the violin and you don't need frets on the violin it's a completely different instrument and i think if you go from the guitar to violin you're kind of instantly worried that there are no frets but it's we learn in a slightly different way that we don't need frets and also the hands are a lot closer so it's a slightly different method so there are frets, sticker frets that you can get on the violin. I'll have one coming up on the screen so you can see what I mean because I don't, I don't actually have one um, with me anymore now. But they are full fret stickers. Um, I think it's actually called it Don't Fret and I did make a video on this way back in the day on my channel, maybe six, seven, eight, nine years ago or so. And so it's a sticker called Don't Fret. There are several around and there's, there's obviously different colored frets and that's where you put your fingers. The problem is, is that you stick it on the the whole of the fretboard so it starts all the way at the top and sort of goes all the way down to there and some of you are sort of worried about putting that on the violin you've got to take all the strings off and you know is it going to damage and leave stickiness on your fingerboard when you remove it and all that kind of stuff um i i i don't like those don't fret stickers i think they're fine if you really really want to use them but i don't think you need to if you follow my course and the way i teach you do not need a don't fret sticker that's going to cost you money to buy anyway i don't know how much they are these days but you don't need it anyway all you need are these these little sticker dots that you can get from your local stationers you can get them up from get them from amazon you can get them from absolutely anywhere and they're just like they're, they're just little kind of coloured dots. I use them occasionally when I'm making tutorial videos so I can put them on my, my violin and show you. So all you need is to put the dots on your fingerboard and that's it. Now I recommend that you only put two dots on the violin and what I will do is I will link to a video on how to put the dots and where to put them and I will link that underneath this I'm not going to show you exactly where to put them in this video because I've already made that video with measurement exact measurements of from the very top and how far down you measure to put the first dot and all that kind of thing so I'm not going to go into that detail today because I already have that video so if you want to know how to do that um, that you can see up here I will link that directly underneath so if you want to know where exactly to put the dots go check out that video and that will tell you but I'm just going to tell you about the dots and why I put them on so you can pick any two colors really doesn't matter it's completely up to you and what you would do is put one where the first finger goes and one where the third finger goes and that is all I I am a teacher that likes using dots on the violin. A lot of people think, oh, you shouldn't put dots on the violin because your fingers get so used to it and you can't hear what you're doing. But, yeah, okay, but my argument to that would be if your ears don't know the sound of correct intonation and where your fingers are supposed to be dropping on the fingerboard, how are you supposed to train your ear to do that in the first place? So if you have no frame of reference, if you're, not, if you're a non-musician and you're just starting out, how are you supposed to hear that? Even if you're a flautist or a pianist or you've come from dabbling from any other instruments, if you don't know the sound of the notes that your fingers are supposed to be creating, how can you tell they're in tune, if they're in tune or not? Because if your finger is half a millimeter up or down, then it's going to be out of tune. If you have the dot in the correct position, your fingers won't be out of tune. And then you can gradually train your ear to learn those notes and where they really should be then after a time you can get rid of the dots and, and not use them anymore. So that's the reason why I do teach with dots but I don't teach with full frets. I don't agree with them for so many reasons. I think 
I think you visually become really lazy. I think your ears become really lazy. They teach you absolutely nothing. I, I really just think it's kind of akin to putting all the letters on the piano keys, which I detest that too. So if you do, <laughs> if you do have letters on the piano keys, get rid of them, take them off. You shouldn't be needing them and you shouldn't be using them. And if you are, you're following the wrong course, in which case, come follow my course. I've also got a one to 40 piano course as well. I'll link that underneath. Yes, this is an absolute shameless plug for that too, but you know, you, you know, you know what I mean. You know I'm right. You shouldn't, no course should ever have you put letters on the piano keys. And if that is true, you're not learning it the proper way. Come learn the piano with me. I promise you, you'll, you'll have them off straight away. And I promise you'll, you'll be learning properly in no time. So the same goes with the violin. I just absolutely detest them. Um, and the worst is when people put them on children's violins when they're teaching them, because I just I just think that you, you you're just not learning anything. You're not learning the names of the letters because you're constantly looking about which line your finger is on. And I think because you're relying so much, the brain is never thinking of anything. The way I do it with the dots is that because I've only got a first finger dot and a third finger dot there is still some thinking involved because you're just sort of using the very bare minimum just to get you going, but you are still having to think a little bit. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and put two dots on my violin, just a yellow one, a blue one. Again, color doesn't matter, whatever. And the yellow one is where my first finger would go, and then the blue one is where my third finger would go. Now, you need the first finger dot because you need to know where to put the first finger. That is the start of everything. So that's why you need the first finger dot. You don't need the second finger dot, and I'll tell you for why in just a second. But you need the third finger dot, because obviously the third finger is another integral uh, finger position, so you do need that there. But also, and this is kind of going a bit advanced, so if you don't really understand this, just kind of don't worry about this too much. But when we move into different positions, for example, third position, the first finger starts where the third finger dot is. So first position is here, so one, two, three, finger four, finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four. And we're starting in first position. When the first finger and everything after that shifts up to where the second finger goes, which is about here, for example, we're now in second position. Where the first finger shifts, shifts up to where the third finger went in, third, in first position, we're now in third position. When the first finger shifts up to where the fourth finger was in first position, we're now in fourth position. When the first thing finger shifts up to where our fifth finger would be, if we had one in first position, we're now in fifth position, sixth position, seventh, and, and obviously so on. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but in a sense, in a nutshell, that's the positions. So third position, first position and third position are two very, very integral and very important positions are the ones that you most use in violin playing. You won't be in third position at the at the beginning of your violin journey, but you will be sort of towards kind of halfway through um, and onwards. So that's why we need the first and we need the third, because the third is gonna be that kind of pivotal one between first and third, and then everything else kind of sets itself after that. But I'm not gonna go into uh, detail about that. So the reason why we don't need the second finger is because the second finger will be in one of two places depending on the music. Now, if you are following my course, my one to 30 violin course, I'll have it linked underneath here. This is all very much fully explained um, in the first 10 lessons and also in a lot more detail in the second 10 lessons. So lessons 11 to 20, and it's also covered in the books with lots of diagrams and explanations and things. So depending on where your second finger goes according to the music, then your second finger will either go jammed in next to the first finger or it will go jammed in next to the third finger. So can you see why we don't need dots? It never just plops down in the middle. That's just a nothing note. That just that that, that note doesn't even exist in, in music. So it will either go, you'll be playing the first finger, then you'll play the second finger and it'll have to go right next door. So it's sort of always pushing it out of the way if you like, or if the music says to, it will go right next door to the third finger. So that's it. So that's why you don't need any other finger notes because as long as you've got the first and as long as you've got the third, everything else just kind of slides in next to it. Same with the fourth finger. The fourth finger will either be jammed in right next door to the third or 
it'll just be like a little gap apart just enough that I can sort of get another finger in so about a centimeter apart and that's where the fourth finger goes and that's very easily seeable you know the finger will just naturally want to go down there so it'll either go right next door to the third finger which is great because we've got a third finger dot or it will just go a little gap apart just like that and that's easy enough to see and we don't really need a dot for that too some people do put a fourth finger dot in I don't really personally feel that's particularly necessary um, and that's and, and, and that's it. Um, that's all the fingers covered. If the first finger wants to play a flat note, a B flat or something, for example, on the A, then it just goes towards the nut of the violin, where the violin sort of has that little ridge, which is the nut, and it won't go back any further. So, so that's it. So that's the first finger covered. So can you see why you don't need any other dots or frets or anything? Because everything is built from the first and the third. So you're still having to think a little bit with the second finger and the fourth finger and things like that. Uh, but you've just got the basic skeleton kind of guide there for you. Just helping you a little bit, giving you a little bit of a hint, but not too much that your brain is having to just take a back seat and just, you know, sit this one out kind of thing. When you're moving in third position, a lot of people do ask this, so I will just perhaps just briefly cover it. Third position, again, you're sort of working in gaps. The, the second finger will either be right next door to the first finger, or there'll be ever so, there'll just be a slight, ever such a slight gap there. Third finger will be either next door to that, or there'll be a slight gap, or next door and a slight gap. So you don't need the third finger frets either, because you're either gonna be next door, slight gap, next door, slight gap, next door, slight gap. So obviously you, you will know what those notes are when you learn it and whether you'll need, uh, you'll, know, you'll need to be close to the finger above it or below it, whatever, or you'll need a little gap. That is all covered in, in my book series and, and my book course. But suffice to say, when you get to that stage, you, you will know those notes and you will know whether it's close or gap. But as far as needing a fret, you won't because it will either be next door or a gap, next door or a gap, one or the other. And that's easy enough to see. That's easy enough to learn. So that is why you don't need a full on fret on the violin. Don't waste your money on those. Just get these little dots. And as I say, the video on to exactly where to put these dots will be linked underneath because I don't want to go into that kind of detail in this video. And that video is working perfectly fine. And oh, the other thing I want to mention as well, some people do say that when they do use those frets, they're straight across, but you cannot put a straight line directly across the strings because they're not going to be in tune. So if you've got a straight line from the G string to the E string and you put your first finger on it, it'll be slightly different because it needs to go in a slight diagonal. So that's another reason why I like just putting the dot in the middle because it kind of just goes gives you a rough placing as to where exactly in this area your first finger needs to go but you can just sort of slightly adjust it for each you know for each kind of string because it's just giving you a, a general guide as opposed to a definite guide that you're really relying on and kind of taking its word for so don't bother with any of those just get these little stickers. If you don't have these little dots or you can't get hold of them, um, then really any sticker will do. Um, perhaps you might have those printer label stickers. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a faff, but if you don't have any dots to hand and you want something like right now, if you've got some of those white um, printer label stickers or, you know, or something like that, maybe you could uh, use a Sharpie, a red Sharpie or a pen or a crayon or something color it in and then just kind of cut yourself out a little circle best you you can so it sort of matches that and then just stick it on the violin that'll do you in a bind to get something like this but these are just better because they don't kind of you'll find that they don't they won't wear off quite so much then when they wear off sticker wears off it'll just peel off straight away glue will just come with it pop another one on job done so there we go. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope this video has been really helpful and um, just talked about a few of those things that um, these questions do come up quite a lot. Um, and they're always quite difficult for me to kind of explain in the comments. So hopefully this video has helped you, told you why I don't use the frets, why I don't think you need to use the frets at all. And as I said, I use these to personally teach and this is the way I teach as well so if you are being taught by someone else or a, you know, a, a teacher a different way or you're using a different book series I, I don't know whatever I can't speak for those but this is the way I do it this is the way I feel is the best way of doing it 
and I always like my students to be the best at, at whatever they're, they're doing and I like the students to do all the thinking. I don't think for my students at all, I make my students do everything themselves. So that's another reason why I use that. And don't forget as well, I did mention at the start of the video that I do have a 1 to 30 violin course as well. For those of you that, that don't know, uh, what I will do is put a link to the video coming up in a card, which I forget which corner it is now. Whichever corner it is coming up now, there'll be a link to the video, uh, which is all about my 1 to 30 violin course. It's a really, really good violin course. It teaches you from absolute scratch. It, there's, there's nothing else like it on the internet. I know I keep going on about this, but there really isn't anything like it on the internet. And it 100% guarantees, guarantees, to teach you and take you from a complete and utter beginner to a really decent accomplished intermediate level I absolutely stand by that guarantee and I can assure you that it works and as I say there's nothing else like it on the internet so if you are looking if you're watching this video and you're just trying to start out and you're really not sure where, where to start, uh, you haven't got a teacher, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, then check out my course. I will put a link to it underneath this, this video because I can't link it obviously in this video. It, everything will be linked underneath the video and I will link another video which will show you what you're gonna learn, what you're gonna be going through, what you're gonna go from and all that kind of good stuff. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video, bye.